The Enemy of the World. Now, this story, I wasn't entirely sure about it for a long time, but whenever I would ask which classic story I should review next on social media, this was one that people said was really good. So eventually I managed to find it, and I gave it a watch. Now, The Enemy of the World is the fourth serial of Doctor Who's fifth season, first broadcast in six parts, from the 23rd of December, age of before Christmas, 1967, to the 27th of January, 1968, and written by David Whittaker. The story sees the second Doctor, played by Patrick Troughton, and his companions Jamie McCrimmon, played by Fraser Hines, and Victoria Waterfield, played by Deborah Watling, land in Australia in the year 2018, where they intend to just have a day at the beach. Now, I have to assume that, uh, like 2015 was for Back to the Future in the 1970s and 1980s, yeah, 2018 was far enough away for people in 1967 for it to be sort of the future! So, yeah, this story does take place in the future. Now, while they're, while they're just trying to have an ordinary day at the beach, they find themselves pursued by a group of assassins. And it turns out the assassins are mainly after the Doctor, not because they know who he is, but because he bears an uncanny resemblance to a philanthropist known as Ramon Salamander, also played by Patrick Troughton. They end up meeting up with other members of the group, including Sir Giles Kent, played by Bill Kerr, a pilot named Astrid Ferrier, played by Mary Peach, uh, the head of the Central European controller of the Central European Zone, Alexander Denish, played by George Pravda, as well as several staff belonging to Salamander, including his security chief, Donald Bruce, played by Colin Douglas, N Nicholas F F Federin, played by David N Nathan, and Theodore Bennett, played by Melton Jones, as well as a taster, Faria Nagib, played by Carmen Munro. And they are trying to figure out exactly what Salamander is up to. Because Salamander, he's supposed to be a philanthropist, a person who kind of acts for the good of humanity, and he appears to be doing just that. But then we find out there's actually more to Salamander than actually meets the eye. I mean, while he is, well, he seems to be human, he is actually doing some very dark things. Like, he is trying to warn people, trying to warn the governments of the world that uh, natural disasters are coming. And when the natural disasters do come, stuff like earthquakes and tremors and the like, he, he does try to act as though, I've been telling you, he, although he mainly just does it to grant a position of power. And underground, it's revealed in an underground bunker, he, well, that bit's a little bit more complicated. Sir Giles Kent, played by Bill Kerr, had examined a tr or organised a training exercise for a group of people to kind of go down deep to the caves. And there they had found Salamander, and Salamander eventually managed to convince the people who had been down there for a year now that a war had gone on on the surface of planet Earth, and it was a nuclear war, Pretty much everyone's been wiped out, and if they go upstairs, then they'll die from radiation poisoning. Now, the leader down there is a man named Swan, played by Christopher Burgess, and there are others, including uh, a young man named Colin Redmayne, played by Adam Verney, and Mary Smith, played by Margaret Hickey. Now, while they desperately want to be able to give... While they see Salamander going back up... going up stairs via his elevator to do in reality just kind of push more of his power on the surface world they long to go up there but they feel like they can't because they think it's radioactive whereas in reality there's been no nuclear war no it's not radioactive up there and you just keep them down there because may, many of them are scientists scientists who can either predict or generate these natural disasters. And he wants to use those to gain power and essentially become the ruler of planet Earth. So it's up to the Doctor, Jamie, Victoria and the crew in order to find a way to stop him. I do actually think this is a really good story. Like People said it's a really good one, I was hesitant about it, but watching through, 
I do see why people would consider this a really good story, and it is. It definitely has that air of kind of darkness of the uncertainty of the future, but at the same time, just with it, it also shows Patrick Troughton's acting range in, in that he can play someone so kind and gentle as the Doctor, but also play someone so cold-hearted and dark as Ramon Salamander. Now. Ultimately, Salamander does end up meeting his defeat. He's somewhat overthrown by most of his colleagues, and he's severely injured in an explosion set up by Giles Kent down the tunnels. Now, it appears at first as though the people underground are trapped, although uh, Astrid does make a plan. To, she does know there are other entrances there, so she does make a plan to get them out. She urges the Doctor to go back to his TARDIS and escape with his friends, to which... While Jamie and Victoria are waiting at the TARDIS for the Doctor, Salamander ends up getting there first. And while they say to him, well, come on then, set, set the controls, let's get out of here, he doesn't know what to do, so he tries offering it to Jamie. Jamie goes, but you told us never to touch the TARDIS controls. Yes, Jamie, I did, to which the Doctor enters. And while Salamander still intends to try and get away from here, given that he's now effectively a martyr, or like they want his head out there. The Doctor, and he ends up setting the TARDIS going, and the Doctor and Jamie and Victoria have to hold on tight as Salamander is sucked out through the TARDIS doors into the Time Vortex. Now, I did feel this was a little bit of an abrupt ending. Like, this did show how in the 1960s that cliffhangers could be somewhat abrupt. Although I do know that they did continue it fairly seamlessly into the next story, The Web of Fear, which, if I remember, I'll stick a card up there somewhere. But, yeah. People said that The Enemy of the World was a good Doctor Who story, and, yeah, I'll admit it's not perfect. As I said, the cliffhanger is a little abrupt, but I definitely say it's a good story. Check it out for yourself if you haven't seen it yet. Now, this telling means I only have one more story to get to complete Victoria's time aboard the TARDIS, these bits that aren't missing, with the one final piece I need being the Ice Warriors. What do I think of that one? Well, we'll see when I get there. Alright, until next time. See ya.